Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at the relief valve from the Febco model 860 or 880 RP backflow preventer. My name is Bart Starr. I'm here at the Viking 2 Training Center in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And the, the Febco relief valve for this model is really interesting because it's, it's a very unique design. It has two diaphragms. It's got an outer diaphragm and it also has an inner diaphragm. And when we take it apart, it's really important that we reassemble it properly because if we don't, the relief valve might not function correctly. It might leak or fail a test with your differential pressure gauge. So what we're gonna do is shut down our backflow preventer and then we're gonna drain the body and then we're gonna remove our internal relief valve module and then we're gonna take it over to the bench and then disassemble it. I'll point some things out and then we will reassemble it and come back over here and reinstall it back in our backflow preventer. So let's start off by closing our shutoff valves. We're gonna close the number two shutoff valve first. And now the number one. Okay, now we're gonna open up our test port. So we'll open number four first. Three, and then two. Okay, our relief valve is draining, the body is emptying. Okay, now let's go ahead and take apart our relief valve. To get inside the relief valve, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can remove the entire brass relief valve body from the rest of the backflow preventer, or you can just take off the brass cover plate like I'm doing here. It really just depends on what you think is gonna be easier out there. So we'll start by taking off the bolts of the relief valve cover. And then once the relief valve cover comes off, you'll see the outer diaphragm. This is the large diaphragm. There's another diaphragm on the inside, which we'll get to in a moment. Now we've got what Febco calls the button. And it's just, it, essentially it's a can. To get out the button, you don't need to remove the screw that you see there on the face. You just run a screwdriver behind the button and the whole relief valve internal module pops out. Now we can take it to the bench. Okay, we've got the relief valve module removed from the body. We've got it over here at the bench now. We can disassemble it. All right, here's what we're gonna need. Crescent wrench, screwdriver, just a flat head, regular standard screwdriver. This O-ring puller, it's kind of like a dental pick. Some lubricant and a business card. Any business card will do. More on that in a little bit. Okay, first thing is we need to remove our lower guide. That's this stem right here, this little post. And what we're gonna do is put our crescent wrench right here on these, this little shelf that they've installed right here on the lower guide. Okay, so we'll get our crescent wrench and just unthread it. Okay, set that aside. Now we can see our relief valve rubber disc. We'll remove that. And we can inspect our relief valve disc. And we're just looking for anything, uh, you know, like grit packed into here, any gouges, if it's cut. Uh, it is replaceable, but this one looks pretty good. Okay, we'll set that aside. Now we'll turn over our module. And now we need to remove this screw. When we remove the screw, it's going to release the tension on our relief valve spring. So it's a good idea to keep some tension or some pressure on top of this button is what the factory calls this. It's, it's this can, right? And so we'll just keep some tension on here. Get our screwdriver. Okay. Okay, we just release the spring. Okay, set the button aside. Okay, relief valve spring, just looks okay. We'll set the spring aside. This is the flow washer. Okay, we'll set that aside. Okay, now we can see the main guide here. There's a few things here. You've got the main guide, 
and then we've got the main stem, that's this white piece, and then the inner diaphragm and this brass nut. So to disassemble this piece, we have to remove the brass nut. If the brass nut on your relief valve module isn't loose like this, the factory has installed these flat spots on the nut here and then also right here. And so you can put a wrench on here or, you know, if you have to, just bang on it so you can loosen it up a little bit. But whatever you got to do, the brass nut's got to come off. Okay, brass nut comes off. This is the slip ring. Okay, we'll set these aside. Okay, now we're going to remove the main stem. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to push on the inner diaphragm to knock it out. Okay, here's your main stem. We'll set that aside. And now your inner diaphragm. We have this O-ring here that we can also inspect and take a look at. If we have to, we can remove it, get our dental pick here. Okay, let's take a look at our O-ring here. Just make sure it's still round and not square. It's not folded or ripped. Everything looks okay. Okay, so we can just go ahead and reinstall this later on once we get everything back together. For now, we'll just set it aside. Okay, so now for reassembly, what we're gonna do is get our main stem and install it in the main guide. And what we're gonna do that <clears throat> is we're just gonna push it through so that the side of the stem that holds the relief valve disc is the side that the O-ring is on right here, opposite of the threads. Okay, so we've got that installed. We'll set this up. And now the inner diaphragm. <clears throat> Interesting thing about the inner diaphragm. There's two sides to this diaphragm. Well, obviously, but one side, and I hope you can see this, one side of the diaphragm is smooth, and the other side kind of has, when you look real close at it, it has like a weave to it, almost like a fabric. It's textured, and then it's also got this built-in o-ring which is right here which is important because that built-in o-ring has to be installed inside the groove of the main guide which is right in here okay so the, we're going to start this out is we're going to place this on top of the stem so that that built-in o-ring is looking straight down into the groove okay and so if, when you look at the both sides here the fabric side and then the smooth side you're going to start it so it's the smooth side in or the fabric side out Okay, so we'll sit that on top of the stem, and then we're just going to fold the diaphragm over itself. Okay, there we go. We're just going to get it started. Okay, now we have to tuck in the diaphragm in between the main guide, the brass piece, and the white stem. And the way we're going to do that is with the business card. There's a couple ways to do it. The business card way is you just get your business card. Any business card will do, stiffer the better. And what you do is just form it a little bit so it's got this curve on it. Okay, and we're going to use the business card to tuck in the diaphragm. Because what we're trying to do here is avoid any kind of wrinkles in the diaphragm. We don't want the diaphragm to be folded onto itself because if it's not installed correctly, the relief valve might not function properly. It might even leak once we get inside the body and we pressurize later on. Okay, so we're just tucking this in. There we go. Okay. That looks pretty good there. It's tight, it's flush. There's no space in between the diaphragm and the white stem. There's no wrinkles around. This looks pretty good. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Let me show you the other way. Okay, we just start out the same way. Stem goes through the main guide. Okay, stand it on end. Okay, 
stand the inner diaphragm on top of the stem, O-ring facing down. Get it started again. Okay. This relief valve here is from the earlier version of the Febco 860 and the 880V, two and a half to 10 inch, they're all the same. Since then, Febco has come out with a lead-free version of the 860 and the 880. So those are the models uh, LF880V and then also LF860. From the outside, the body, the casting, is the same as the, the earlier version, but the internal parts are different. The relief valve is different also. This is a brass uh, relief valve. On the newer lead-free versions, it's plastic. And what's What's interesting about this newer version is that what's keeping this inner diaphragm in place is this inner diaphragm plate, right? It's, which is underneath this silver plate right here with these screws. It's underneath there and it's just keeping it tucked in. And all I've done is taken the inner diaphragm plate from the lead free relief valve and that is use it in place of the business card for the older version. So we've already started this about halfway. You just get this piece here. See, it's got this little lip on the edge here. And I just use that to tuck in that diaphragm. And it does it really nice. It, it tucks it in equally all the way around. There we go. Okay. There we go. That's what we want there. It's even. It's flush. No wrinkles. That looks good. All right, set that aside. Next, the brass nut. So we'll make sure we have our slip ring in. Okay, a little bit past hand tight is fine. There we go. Next, the spring. Now the flow washer, there's two sides to the flow washer. You have this cross side and you've got the flat side. So we'll install this so it's the flat side on top of the diaphragm. Okay. Next, the button. Okay, and so we need to compress the spring and install the screw. Okay, compress the spring. Put the screw in. Okay, now we'll turn over the module and we need to install our O ring. And so we'll put a little dab of lubricant on the O ring. Okay. Next, the relief valve disc, and now the lower guide. Okay, now we are finished reassembling the relief valve module. Now we can reinstall it back into our backflow preventer. Putting the relief valve back together can be a little bit more challenging than taking it apart. First thing we need to do is to put the internal relief valve module back into the brass housing. Next, we're going to put the large diaphragm, that's the outer diaphragm, on top of the internal relief valve module. Next, we're going to put the relief valve cover plate back onto the housing and then put in a couple bolts. Next, we're going to install the relief valve triangular shaped gasket that goes in between the back flip preventer and the top of the relief valve brass cover. It's important to do this part while the relief valve cover is still loose. After that, we're going to install the rest of the bolts. Okay. 
and then tighten everything up. Okay, we've got our relief valve back in the body and now we're gonna repressurize our RP. Right now we're gonna leave shutoff valve number two closed and we're gonna leave uh, test ports four, three, and two open. Now we're going to just open up shutoff valve number one to pressurize the body. We'll so we'll give it a little bit of flow here. Okay, we're pressurizing. Okay, we're bleeding out of two. We'll close test port two. Give it a little bit more flow. All right, bleeding through the test port. Okay, now we can open shut off valve number one fully. Our packing here is leaking a little bit. That's okay, we can tighten, tighten up those packing nuts here in a little bit. Okay, shutoff valve one is open. Now let's pressurize the system slowly by opening shutoff valve number two. Okay. There we go. Before we walk away, we'll make sure nothing else is leaking. We'll look at the relief valve, make sure the relief valve isn't dripping. Everything seems to be dry, everything looks great. Hope you liked the video. If you have any comments, just leave them down below. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.